Well, the internet has pretty much killed print reference. But um, the Encyclopedia of New York City was unusually successful. Uh, really a bestseller as an encyclopedia, um, was much honored. And we also think that the internet, you find out what you're looking for, but not what you're not looking for. And so much of, of what is so exciting about the past or even the present are things that we find serendipitously. And you turn the pages of the encyclopedia and there's almost always something that you were not looking for, but it turns out to be very interesting. In the ni early 1990s when the other one came out, uh, we have more sports figures, a few more living people, a few more women. Um, if we, there are also some that have just happened. For example, we had one entry on the World Trade Center earlier. Now we have about 13 because when the previous book came out, they were, those towers were standing. Uh, we have entries on things like MetroCard and EasyPass, which didn't exist. It's about 25, 30 percent larger longer, more words in the first edition. The index is 100 pages versus 33 pages. So we really tried to be much more comprehensive in the first edition. If you, there was an entry on Lou Gehrig, then he wouldn't be indexed at all because there was an index. Whereas now, you know, if, if under Yankee Stadium or something else, we have more reference, cross-references to the same people and their relationships. We redid the photographs almost completely. Um, 400 new photographs taken especially for this book. Uh, we have the fire commissioners of New York. Or what were the worst fires in New York history? Or who were the Bronx borough presidents? It has more than 5,000 entries. Uh, it's more than 2.2 million words. It's the largest book of facts ever written about one city between two covers. We have lists of every newspaper ever published in New York. Well, that would be more than any other city because there's so many, well, well over a hundred ethnic groups. We have lists of every song, you know, written about New York City. That's a lot. There are a lot of the television programs. You know, mostly a book like this is synthetic. It takes other scholarship and pulls it together and brings it to a more general audience. But this book also has entries that are cutting edge. I mean, there is nowhere else you can find this. I'm, I'm thinking of the entry on squares or on armories for this is new scholarship. Or one thinks of the one on railroads where it shows all the combination of railroads that used to exist in New York City and how they came together over time. It has long entries on all the boroughs, on all the ethnic groups, that'd be more than 100, and most especially on all the neighborhoods in New York City of which they're more than 450, and people in New York City live in neighborhoods, but they have no legal, ex there's no such thing as a neighborhood if you just want to be legal about it. In other words, there's, they don't exist in the city organizational structure. They don't have official boundaries, let's say, unlike a German city. Um, you know, where is Chinatown? Where is the Lower East Side? What is the meatpacking district? And sometimes these things evolve over time, so the encyclopedia becomes a kind of reference for where are neighborhoods and why are they important and how have they changed and who lives there. This book is a physical manifestation of a kind of, of a particular kind of a love affair. Uh, you know, it's got its problems. We didn't say that every event, every encounter was wonderful, but all taken all together. You know, if you can't find anything in New York to interest you, then I'd say you're tired of life.